Well, the first thing to realize about this instrument is that the player has to play not only the notes, but you're in charge of making the wind. Keep, you're like a singer. You have to make sure that you've got air for all the pipes to play, which means that you have to put air into the system. There is a feeder valve or feeder which puts air up into a regulator which lives up on top and from there it goes down to the pipes. So when you're beginning to play you have to first of all fill air in. You have to pump about six or so times and when you have filled up there is a little valve at the top called a relief valve and you can hear it if you keep pumping you can hear a little puff of air and that keeps you from <laughs> overfilling the bellows and exploding them. So when you've reached that point, then you can begin to play. And while you are playing, you have to keep your foot working. You have to keep putting air into the system. But you are not keeping time with the instrument. So in other words, if you're only playing one note at a time, you're using very little air. So you don't need to pump very fast, but if you're playing a big chord where you're using more air, you have to realize that your pumping has to increase in order to keep the air supply up. If you don't keep the air supply up, what happens is... It stops. So you have to make sure that you have your reservoir full. It's also important to pump long even strokes not fast sometimes you get worried and that you and you start pumping very fast and what happens is is that it starts shaking the whole wind system but if you pump evenly you can keep the air moving replacing the air that you're using with new air without causing any large pitch variations or any shaking of the wind Next step would be tuning the instrument. In order to do that, you have to remove the pipe shade, which is done. There's a little button at the top, which has a turn button behind it. You turn it 90 degrees, that releases the pipe shades, and it just, they come straight out. And now you have the pipes and the bellows all exposed. What's down here is the feeder bellow, which is collecting the air, as I said, and putting it up into the reservoir above. Tuning, the pipes are all in chromatic order with the exception of the bottom lowest three pipes which are in back and then from that point on you just simply going from left to right. If you're setting your, your uh, temperament, if you use a, a tuner in order to find out where you are, you have, the easiest thing to do is just kind of put your hand, that'll locate where you are. So here we are at C sharp. In order to tune, you don't simply grab and start and push and or pull the stopper up and down. You need to gently rock it. It doesn't need to move much and in order to do that you also you should be this is sort of you should be holding the pipe in place as you gently rock the pipe. Where am I? until your pipe is in tune. When you're moving up again, steady winding is very important, particularly in the treble pipe, the top octave or so. Those pipes are very easy. They reflect any variations in pitch. The best way to tune those would be to fill the reservoir up and then stop pumping as you're tuning those octaves. That will give you the steadiest wind so that you'll have about 15 seconds to tune, then you have to put air back in. This instrument also has the ability to transpose from an A415 to an A440. In order to do that, the, you just simply shift the keyboard. In this instance, we're at low pitch, which means it's all the way to the left. In order to transpose, you lift the little brass knobs at either end, which have pins which help keep the keyboard from shifting. Lift the keyboard slightly, move it to the right, 
and then the pins go back down into a second set of holes and we are now up at high pitch or at 440. Then we're ready to play. You can replace the pipe shade. It goes in sliding in right hand side, slides in and the little turn button comes up and holds that in place. The music desk can go back. It rests on the two pins on either side. It rests Reins back and you are ready to play. When you're ready to transport the instrument, it's necessary to remove the music desk. However, everything else can stay in place. In order to, to move it, you have to disconnect the treadle from the instrument. That is done by lifting out. Do not undo the knot at the end of the pull down cord. The treadle is now free. The entire instrument simply sits on the stand. It can be lifted two people straight up. There are locating blocks underneath, but there are no screws that are connected. It simply lifts straight off. When it is being transported, it's best if you can keep the instrument standing vertically. The stand, if you've got space, it's easiest to have it all move as a unit. It can be disassembled. There are four bolts one at either end. An Allen wrench, you can disconnect it and have it come apart if necessary.